I'm sitting next to Michael King. He's a content marketing expert, and I heard he's really, really into Mercedes. And now, Michael, I would really, really like to know, do you like Mercedes so much because it's a good product or because they do good marketing? It's a good product. It's a great product. It's an awesome car, or cars. Um, when I've been coming to Germany for eight years now. I used to do music for a living. And um, I was always amazed that like the taxis here are Mercedes. So, you know, just riding around in like an E-Class, I'm like, yeah, I made it, you know? Like, obviously I didn't make it, but it's a lot of fun to like just be in a really cool luxury car that's just really well crafted. I mean, I, I feel that way about a lot of things that come out of Germany from like an engineering standpoint. Um, you guys are ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. So I really love this country. Were you ahead of the curve also on content marketing? No, not at all. You guys suck at that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, I don't know uh, exactly what the content is because I don't speak German. But um, I think in general with Internet marketing, um, there are things that don't catch on in other countries as soon as they do in the States. And, um, you know, there are some things that we do in the States that I haven't seen here yet, but obviously, it's all about context, like what do users in Germany respond to? So it may not make sense to do the things that we do in the States all the time. First of all, you don't have to learn German. It really takes too long. <laughs> uh, and some of us can speak English. But so what things are going on in the US that you haven't seen in Germany so far? It's a secret. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think that one of the things that we're doing very effectively now is marketing automation. And marketing automation means a lot of things to a lot of people, but what I'm talking about is like, you know, the site reacting to features of users and, you know, their behaviors on the website, and then having content that is more personalized to that effect. So, um, I mean, it, it's even has like kind of a slow adoption in the States, but the companies that are doing it effectively are seeing, you know, outsized returns from it. So I would like to see, you know, more of Germany doing that because I feel like you guys would be really good at it. That sounds interesting. Can you give me an example of that? How does that sure. work? Sure. So an example of a website, there's a website called ModCloth. They're like an e-commerce uh, site in the States. And let's say you're a plus size woman, which you're not. Um, uh, when you go to the site and you put plus size clothing into your cart, and let's say you leave the site and you come back, all the visuals, all the models are now the plus size women uh, models. So based on your behavior and your features that, that you showcase as a user, um, they make changes to the website that ultimately uh, cause more conversion. Or even just on a content standpoint, like if I show that I'm interested in X, Y, and Z, then the recommendations that I see uh, later on will be based on those those facets of my behavior. So BuzzFeed actually does that as well. If you were to open um, the console in your browser and see what they load, they're tracking a ton of stuff on you based on your behavior and where you're from and things like that. And so the content that they suggest to you is based on that. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not seeing a lot of people or marketers doing that over here. BuzzFeed also forces me to go to the German website every time, and I really, really don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, just change the <laughs> I mean, what you describe uh, sounds really, really handy and also really impressive, but also a bit scary. Aren't there, cost aren't there people who say, oh, why do they know that? That's scary. I don't want them to know that. Well, people say that, but their behavior says otherwise. Like, I think at this point, people understand that there's so much information on the web about you that I want a better experience if you're going to collect all this data, right? So, I mean, especially with like how our government, or excuse me, the American government, the NSA is like collecting all this data on you and you're like, oh, they know too much about me. But the reality of it is, there's so many things that you're doing on a regular basis anyway that's contributing to that. Like, um, if you use a credit card for anything, credit card providers sell that data to marketers. If you have, um, uh, like a, a shopper rewards card of any kind. They're tracking that data so they can sell it to marketers. So if you're gonna say that about the internet, you have to say that about your credit card and everything else you're doing as well. So the customer already gave up, like, okay, they're tracking me anyway, so I might as well 
Yeah. Have a better user experience. Yeah, exactly, because there's a ways around all this stuff. Like, if, if you don't want to be tracked, don't have JavaScript on your browser. Don't um, use Google or Facebook. Like, you can do all these things so they can't track you, but then you're not going to have a modern experience at all. Do you know people who do that? Yeah, I do know some tinfoil hat people that do all that stuff. <laughs> but are they in content marketing? Probably not. Absolutely not. I mean, they're, they're typically like developers, people that understand the underworkings of all this, and they know exactly how to block it. So, you know, there's um, a network called Tor, where you can browse the web anonymously. So you'll find people that use stuff like that are the ones that are trying to actively circumvent all the things that, uh, you know, ad tech is using to track you. So you also presented in your masterclass that you did a lot of tools about content marketing. Mm -hmm. how, Were you like, there? Um, no. <laughs> How Someone do you know these things? That. Why are you tracking me? <laughs> yeah, I, keep, I kept track of you yesterday because I was not able to get into the master class. Mm -hmm. It was too full, so I had a spy there. And that he told is a me... really good response <laughs> to that question. <laughs> so um, they said that you present a lot of tools mm -hmm. for, for content marketing. Sure. So how important are these tools? Do I need them or is it more like understanding what content marketing really means? Well, I, I look at it like this. You don't need any tool. I mean, you can do everything by hand if you want. Uh, these tools are typically for enhancing whatever you're trying to do or speeding it up. So, you know, you don't need a tool for wireframes. You could make them in PowerPoint if you want. But there are specific tools for that, like Balsamic, which speeds it up because it has all the assets for you where you can just drag and drop and say, okay, this is a web page. These are the different elements that I need for a web page. I don't have to recreate them. So, a lot of the tools that I showed were very much about productivity, but also I wanted to show them in context of developing an actual content strategy. So it's one thing for me to be like, here's a list of tools that you could potentially use, and it's another thing to say, here's a workflow, here's a process, here's how all these things come together, and that's what I did yesterday. One last question, since Germany seems already to be a bit like, yeah, the US seems to be ahead of Germany, let's put it that way. Um, maybe you can give us some insights. What's the next, next big thing in terms of platforms? What is a big thing in the US now and will probably come to Germany as well? I mean, that's hard to say. Like, everything is available to everybody, you know? Um, but to me, what, what I'm really interested in right now is the marketing automation platforms, right? And there are already the big companies that are already here, like Marketo is featured here today. Um, there's other tools like Monetate, also really big. But the way I look at it is that space is catering too much to like the enterprise companies. They're not catering to the medium businesses or the small businesses. So there's going to be some smaller technologies that are going to come out in the next few years that are going to probably disrupt that space and then make marketing automation and personalization something that's accessible to everybody. And that's maybe the tools that are really handy for small companies because they they can use them. Exactly. Thank you very much for these insights. Thank you for this interview and have a nice day here. Thank you too, Lauren.